Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to go over bunkers in a little bit of detail. Now, we will go over the actual structure of good and bad bunkers, but for the majority of the video I'm going to be discussing the hypotheticals and theoreticals of bunkers, as well as how they impact the overall flow of gameplay and the game progression of you as a player. The three key points of using a bunker in practice, in my opinion, is your team, your awareness, and your objective. Now, I think I should elaborate on these a little bit. Team. Largely, you should make sure that your team is all on board with the idea of using a bunker, not just the team composition. However, a very important thing involving your team is that you should never bunker without a driller. Not only does it take much longer to construct a meaningful and useful bunker, it also leaves you with essentially no way out if something bad does happen. Awareness. Now, this doesn't mean exactly what you think it might. You might expect me to say, be aware of your surroundings so you know if a bulk is about to dig in on top of you. Well, not exactly. More so, this is the major point of this video for me, is having the awareness to understand that a bunker is not always going to solve all your problems. Because it will solve the same problem every time. Which is fighting off most, if not all, bugs in a swarm in a very effective way with almost a 0% chance of failure. We'll go into this a bit more later. And finally, objective. This ties into awareness a little bit, which is just knowing why you're using a bunker in that scenario. Are you extremely low on ammo? Is your team inexperienced? Are you desperately trying to beat an elite deep dive or something like that? These are good situations in which to use a bunker. A bad reason to use a bunker is it's the only way you know how to win. Once again, we'll elaborate a little bit more on this later. First, let's go over some very basics of good and bad bunkers and what they look like. Bad bunkers stick out like a sore thumb. They're shallow and they're cramped. Not having a long run up to the area that you're going to be fighting in or having an awkward angle of approach are surefire ways to get yourself in trouble. However, looking at a good bunker, it's a defensible position with a long run up, areas to stand to the left and right, places to be out of the way, and room for the other things you might need like a resupply or molly. Once again, citing drilling in the name of videos on bunkies and under bunkies for this, because this stuff has been covered well and really nothing I can say will meaningfully add to the construction of good bunkers. Both of those videos will be linked in the description. So what you'll see in this clip is actually me doing what I would consider the worst bunker possible, which is just digging into a wall and then the most anti-bunker threat possible arrives, which is a bulk detonator. And even in this situation where I'm in the worst possible bunker completely by myself, and the anti-bunker enemy spawns, I'm able to survive the situation completely fine. Sure, bunkering didn't save me in this situation, but this really does poke a hole in the argument that bunkers are somehow dangerous, because if you have your ears open and your driller is awake, there's absolutely no reason you should ever die in a bunker. But now I'd like to go off on my own for a little while. The biggest issue with bunkers isn't their risk or anything like that. In fact, anyone that says that a bunker is risky or a surefire way to lose a mission just doesn't know what they're talking about. Because a semi-competent driller can almost guarantee success in literally any situation by making a bunker. The issue with bunkers isn't that they're dangerous, it's that they're boring and they handicap you. So let me explain. There's always going to be situations in DRG where you're caught out in the open and you need to know how to scrap with bugs on flat ground and fight for your life. There will not always be time or the objectives will not allow you to dig a bunker and fight bugs that way. You need to know how to fight out in the open against enemies, dodge attacks, and how to do threat prioritization. Bunkers allow you to throw all of this out the window by sitting in a corner, aiming in one direction, and basically just holding left click. Fundamentally, there's nothing wrong with using a bunker to win a mission. It's a very good use of creative problem solving. But having the awareness, like we talked about before, to know that you're not getting any better at the game while using a bunker is very important. I draw a very, very clear distinction between people using bunkers to win missions that they just aren't ready to win yet, and people that are, you know, overqualified and definitely shouldn't be using bunkers at the point that they're at and should be focused more on improving their gameplay skills. If it's your first week that you've had the elite deep dive unlocked and you just desperately want to beat stage 2 and get that core, by all means, use a bunker. But if you're level 700 and your first reaction on a has 4 swarm is to dig into the wall and 
hunker down, that's not really a healthy approach in my opinion. Of course, everyone plays this game for different reasons, so if you're not interested in improving at the game and you just want to win the mission that you're playing right now, then maybe a bunker is the answer to all your problems. However, someday you're going to find yourself in someone else's game where they will not allow you to bunker, and you don't want to be dead weight because you don't know how to kite, strafe, and fight in an open area. I'm painting these in extremes, and it's not like bunkering one time is going to make you worse at the game forever. Just, you know, learn to fight out in the open, and don't always resort to bunkering while you're learning the game. And now for the most opinion-related piece in this entire video, bunkers are just boring. I'm sure plenty of people will agree with me, but I'm sure a few will disagree as well. I can definitely see the appeal of building a bunker, making it all perfect, and then fighting to defend it. However, for me, the construction of it just isn't interesting to justify the long, drawn-out, and boring fight that happens inside of it. I can't speak for everyone, but the reason that I'm still playing DRG after almost 4,000 hours is for the combat. Yeah, the mining is good, but holding right-click only has so much challenge to it. The reason I continue to play the game is the engaging fights in the random cave generations, brawling on a cliff edge, almost falling into pits over and over again, just barely edging out a Praetorian and knocking them into a pit instead of falling in myself. That's what I play this game for. Not sitting in a corner of a cave, holding left click, waiting for the swarm to be over. I live for the high octane fights on the cliff edges, like what you're seeing in front of you. Like I said, this is a heavily opinion piece, but god damn it feels good to play this way. And I think that if you resort to bunkering and don't really think about fighting out in the open and getting creative with movement and combat, you might really miss out and miss the point of the high level combat in this game. I always get funny looks when I say it, but I really honestly believe DRG is a form of movement shooter. You move, and you shoot. If you don't do both well enough, you die. And the skill ceiling for both the movement and the shootment are pretty darn high, especially for a co-op game. And there are plenty of people out there that just don't get it, they're too wrapped up in dwarf RP, or they just think it's cringe whenever someone tries hard in a game that's co-op, and I guess I understand that, but overall, it's really just fun to be good at games, and trying hard even when you don't have to try hard, it, it feels nice in a way. This is something I touched on in the video essay I made a couple months ago. Always pushing yourself to be better, attuning yourself to a higher level of skill expectation, you know, basing yourself off of your own success, things like that. But to wrap it up with a nice little bow, the moments that I love of the combat in this game, and basically the game as a whole, because I enjoy the combat more than anything, is fighting in wild ways, in open rooms, bouncing around, circling around enemies, and just going through that deadly dance in every fight. Bunkers take that away from me, and that's my favorite part of the game. So, obviously, I'm just not really interested in bunkers. I don't think less of people who bunker on their own time, but I do think they are missing out on something really enjoyable. And of course, I'm not a fan of people non-consensually bearing objective items on salvage in my game while I'm not looking. But I think a lot of people can relate to that. So to wrap things up with a nice little bow, bunkers are extremely effective. Don't let anyone tell you they aren't. They're not dangerous, they're boringly strong. If you'd like to learn to make a bunker so good that it's called a bunky, you can head over to Drilling in the Name of's channel. He has two very good videos for the two types of bunkers that you'll realistically use in Deep Rock Galactic, the bunky and the underbunky, and those tutorials tell you basically everything you need to know in a much more compact way than anything that I would make on the topic. Bunkers are quite strong, but they're just not for me. If you'd like to catch me live, I stream over on Twitch. If you'd like to talk to me about how bunkers are incredibly fun, you can find me and my community over on Discord. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.